Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this morning is based on the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. You will see that life can have its share of shocking moments, but that Jesus prepares you for them through faith in him. Again from Luke's Gospel, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. So for the text, let us pray. O Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. I found that whenever something shocks me, I have not been paying very good attention. A father might walk into his living room to find an awful mess of shampoo, vinegar, baking soda, bubbles, and food coloring. And when he inquires, perhaps not so calmly, what's going on, his children tell him, you said we could do an experiment. Who said you could? You did when we asked. Don't you remember? No, of course you don't remember. You weren't paying attention. Captivated by a far more important matter, or the television, you gave permission without really listening to the question. Maybe your house has not had a slime explosion, but you have had your share of surprises. Or you find out you have two appointments scheduled for the exact same time. Your children have an important event you can't take time work off of to attend. Something you would have made the extra effort for, had you known. But, in all honesty, you could have known. Had you not been distracted by other priorities. For most household conflicts and surprises end with the words, hard to hear but true, we talked about this. In this morning's parable, the rich man ends up with quite a shock when he ends up in hell. Shocked that he's there, shocked even that there is such a place. And the overarching message from heaven is that he should have been paying better attention. The rich man's first question concerning his eternal end is, can't we change this? No. Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. With these words, the rich man is told the first detail he should have recognized in life. The poor man, Lazarus. The rich man had lived a life of sumptuous fare and fine clothing, but each day outside his home, set by the gates, was a man who lived his life in abject misery. He walked by this wretch each time he left and came back home, and from this fact alone, the rich man should have known there was something wrong with life. There, shriveled from starvation and licked by dogs, was a stark message placed there by God that this, his creation, has been corrupted. A reality you and I do our best to ignore and overcome. When you face a financial setback, you work hard as you can to pull yourself out of it. When you suffer from a physical ailment, you, you forge on best you can. In, in modern America, 
We try to keep our communities clean and free of such obvious signs of poverty. Why, who here has had to see anything like the sight of miserable Lazarus? And any time you've had to see something even close, we quickly dismiss it. There, there's so much help, they shouldn't have to live like that horribly. What's wrong with them that they can't get a job? like the rich man, who at the sight of Lazarus performs mental gymnastics in order to overcome the obvious. At least he gets to sit here and collect for me and my rich friends. It was an obvious message he should not have so lightly dismissed. For when it comes to the rich man's shock and surprise at death, it is revealed that the poor man was there as God's clear message that he should have known there was a problem with this world, that there is a hell. such that in eternal fire, the rich man receives only the divine judgment. We talked about this. Yes, any time in life when we don't pay attention, we set ourselves up for a shock. Like ignoring your children's questions and ending up with a mess in the living room, You've ignored the obvious signs of a loved one's life falling apart, only recognizing it way too late. You've encountered tragedies. Your first response to is, I should have seen this coming. Or you did see it. You saw it all. But thought it best to subtly ignore or enable in the hopes it might just kind of go away. Yes, some of these shocks you can trace back quite well, others not at all. Sudden death, financial loss out of nowhere, unforeseen illness, events which change completely your day or life. Even with these unexpected ones, though, God says you should have known. For he has provided you with more than enough Lazaruses, obvious signs of this world's evil and the consequences of your own sins, to know that many more may come upon you at any moment. Obvious signs which we, like the rich man, try our best to, to dismiss and overcome, fooling only ourselves. For when God allows you to be shocked, he reveals you aren't improving things, that you aren't in his control as you think. As the apostle teaches, all these things are the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. And again, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen so that they are without excuse. Pay attention. Your shocking moments, don't deny them. Every jarring reminder of sin and death God forces you to see, don't turn away. Instead, receive them now as he intends. For the man who denies in unrepentance until the end receives one last shock, a hell from which there is no relief. Uh, an eternal anguish to which all God can rightfully say is, we talked about this. But the good news is that God sends not just shocking reminders and jarring wake-up calls. No God has entered our fallen world himself through his word in order to save. As our parable says, 
they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. As soon as our first parents fell into sin, God began sending those obvious signs. The warmth of Eden turned into the piercing cool of the day. A once perfect marriage descended into resentment and blame. And the creation they were to rule now ruled them, squeezing from their bodies sweat and blood. With all of these things, Adam and Eve felt the sting of their sin. But God immediately promised to take that sin away, saying, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. A curse on the servant, but a blessing upon you, that God would send a Savior to change forever what we cannot undo. All the shocking reminders you face in life, from poverty and natural disaster on the news, to disappointment and personal disaster in your life, they are all but God's law. For they do is reveal our sin. A law he spoke in an inerrant, immutable form from Mount Sinai. A law so piercing and thunderous that the people cried, Let us not hear again the voice of the Lord our God, neither let us see this great fire any more, that we die not. God agreed. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God. Promising to send a Redeemer to take God's rightful wrath away from you to be his own. Throughout Moses and all the prophets, this promise was repeated and repeated up until its fulfillment when God became man. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Every detail of Jesus' birth and life was the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. And the miracles Jesus performed, the scriptural truths he taught, further confirmed him to be that prophet sent to save. Yet there were many who paid little attention. As John describes, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus revealed himself as our Savior and revealed as well how your salvation would be accomplished by his cross. But even those who did receive him, who had followed him most closely, they somehow missed this central message. For when his passion began to unfold, they were shocked. They tried to stop it with a sword, denied the miserable scene of Jesus beaten and scourged, denied even that they knew him, and forgot those miracles they had beheld as they chanted and cried, Crucify him. What a miserable end for poor Jesus. But it was no shock. It was an end he saw coming from eternity. For the pain he endured, he did so knowingly and willingly, well aware that by suffering hell in your place, you never would. You see, unlike any mere mortal, he could pay the price for sin. 
and thereby change everything between you and God. For by the authority of his resurrection from the dead, Jesus has earned you the forgiveness of sins. Putting an end to God's rightful wrath, such that in exchange you receive his eternal care, and transforming your death from the gateway to hell it should be, into the portal to heaven it is, by grace. Marvel, dear Christians, that it was our lack of focus which sent Jesus to the cross. Had they been paying better attention, they would never have crucified him. But that's God's love for you, that Christ humbled himself to our worst to free you from it all. It is good news indeed that God sends this gospel message into our fallen world, that he tells you about it now, today, and throughout your life. For without the gospel, you'd only have one shocking moment after another up until the final eternal one. But through this gospel word, God prepares you for every moment you face through the sure and certain hope of eternal life in Christ your Lord, equipping you to endure every hardship as but a reminder of the reality of the sin, death, and hell Jesus came to conquer and destroy. So whenever you find yourself shocked in life, repent that you haven't been paying good attention. Return to the Holy Scriptures to learn what you've missed and to begin to see this world and yourself how God defines it. But most importantly, there in holy writ, find his mercy and grace. Yes, if you don't pay attention, you're in for a shock. But by repentance and faith, you may confess instead God's will and as always good, and Jesus' death and resurrection as the proof. That instead of denial, avoidance, and anger, you might say, yes, yes, God, we have talked about this. Thanks be to him that he has awakened you and called you to faith. For in the forgiveness of sins, there are no surprises. Only God's perfect plan for you. And in the end, eternal delight. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.